While Wolf Ruby Bridges would desegregate William French Elementary School, that same day three six-year-olds would desegregate McDonough 19 Elementary School, they would become known as the McDonough Three. And 60 years later, the school will soon be a center for social justice bearing their names. November 14, 1960, six-year-old Leona Tate prepared for her first day of school. We have family and friends, you know, at the house, just, just helping my mother, uh, supporting her to get me prepared to come. Um, and the black car pulled up in front of the door. I was walking 10 or 11 blocks to my old school, and to get a ride to a closer school was a luxury, you know, and uh, not realizing that these men were security. The six-year-old was oblivious to the fact she was about to make history. And when we turned on St. Claude, I mean, the street, it was mobs of people. I didn't even recognize that they were all white. You know, it was just mobs of people and then police on horseback. Knowing that a parade used to pass here, I thought a parade was coming. So they started pulling their kids out of school. By three o'clock, they were all gone. And we were only three in this entire building. And that lasted the whole first grade and half of the second grade. Leona Tate, Gail Eddian, and Tessie Prevost became known as the McDonough Three, desegregating the school six years after the Supreme Court Brown versus Board of Education court ruling, making segregated schools unconstitutional. Now you are walking into this building <laughs> 60 years later. <laughs> I really and still feel like I'm dreaming. I really, really do. I really Today, they return like to I'm those halls as they are being converted and to the Tate, Etienne, and Prevost there. Center, a soon-to-be exhibit yeah, we space, were. social justice education we center, and senior housing facility, thanks in large part to Tate's efforts to revitalize the building after Hurricane Katrina. I initially asked them to redo it as a school yes. because it was a, we had like five schools in this area before Katrina. Katrina, but only one was coming back. Uh -huh. And I kept saying, well, if we don't put anything for them, you know, them to bring children back, they're not going to, you know, we got to put something here for them to come back. For Tate, it's not just about saving a building, but bridging a community, one that has been forgotten. I'm more excited about what it's going to do to this community than what my involvement in it, you know, it, it, it needs to energize this community. And in returning that energy back to her origin, the McDonough Three hope to also go back to what led them to make history here in the first place, so we won't find ourselves repeating it again. The racism part started here, and I feel like this is where it's gonna heal. We're gonna, we're gonna have some racial healing here. I want it to end here. Well, the Tate Evian, uh, Edian, rather, excuse me, Prevost or TEP Center is expected to open by spring of next year. Uh, the People's Institute for Survival and Beyond plans to re relocate, excuse me, if I can get that out, their headquarters to the new space to conduct the Undoing Racism workshops. Now, while the top two floors of the building will house seniors that are 55 and older, and Karen, that's going to be a mixed-use building throughout mm -hmm. the center. They plan to also have a living museum to highlight some of their memories of their time desegregating mm -hmm. the school. One of those memories that she shared with me was the stairwell that they had to play underneath and eat their food underneath because they weren't allowed to go outside throughout their entire time at the school because it just wasn't safe. It was a small stairwell space that they'll highlight there too as well. So heartbreaking, but what a compelling interview. You could sit there and listen to her all day long. She's history yeah. and yeah. A, a, a modern day civil rights leader. So that was a beautiful story. Yes, and continuing to make change. Mm -hmm.